Someone special to introduce to you now, an explorer whose adventures have taken her from Siberia to Australia, from Thailand to the Andes Mountains. And along the way, she has encountered thieves on horseback, delirium-inducing fevers, sub-zero temperatures, and this is the worst one, salt water crocodiles and lots of them. To tell me about her latest expedition, three months alone in a remote part of Australia, is National Geographic explorer Sarah Marcus. Good to have you with us, Sarah. Dropped uh. by helicopter in a remote part of Australia. What did you go through? <laughs> well, the idea was to actually find again this feeling that the Aboriginal people from Australia felt thousands of years ago. So how I can survive as a white female. So I get dropped with a helicopter and then I watch the helicopter going away and I'm, I'm like alone in this really remote location. And then on the second day, the crocodile tried to steal some of my gear. And I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> crocodiles must have been a big thing. They're everywhere in that part of Australia. Yeah, they're everywhere. You've got sweet crocodile and salty crocodile, which is a pretty nasty one. And they can walk on land, so you can find them also five kilometers away from your camp. So you can go away from water, but they're always there. And you don't see them really. So there was this really big tension, and there was like the fire season also was on. And then I need to find find food for myself. So I what did you eat? So I've been fishing. I'm a good fisherwoman. So I've been fishing, and the first fish I caught, I was happy. The fish jumped on the top of the water, and I was so happy and excited. And then suddenly I hear this clap thing, and the, the crocodile was stealing my fish. So I need to find a plan B and go really secretly to my second fishing spot and really fish with no noise and then I could find fish. Right, because the crocodiles didn't know you were there. Exactly. Then. What about the snakes? Well, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the world, it's a bit of a funny part. It's a northern part of Australia. There was no human sign and so much isolated that actually the bird was coming so close to me to just check on me what I was. It was so pristine and so believable experience. Every day when you were there, were you just thinking about survival? Is that the sort of key thing that is in your mind? How am I going to get through today? It's exactly that. It's been really a challenge. I, I lose 12 kilograms on the first part of the journey. It was a lot. It was one and a half months only, but it was, was really tough. Be hungry. You know, the first week I thought I was hungry, but then three weeks down, down the road, I was like, this is really hungry. And then I was getting more hungry. And it was really tough to deal with all, all the part of my body was perspiring. I want food, I want food, calling for food. And you have to be controlling that, that calling. But you mentioned wanting to have the experience of the Aboriginals. But other people watching this will be going, why else do you do this, Sarah? Why do you put yourself through this? Well, it was really interesting, you know, the relationship with God with nature. I wanted to understand if as a white female, I could actually survive there. And also comes with the big question, you know, of today. How are we going to feed the planet? I understand the complexity of feeding myself, only one person. How are we going to feed the planet tomorrow? And when it finishes, are you a different person after the experience? Oh, yeah, yeah. I visit my fridge quite, quite often, <laughs> you know, to check if there is some food in it. <laughs> yeah. But do you feel inside that something changes in you all that time alone and fighting and battling the elements as you have? Yeah, I get closer to nature. I get closer to my, my instincts and who I am today. Uh, that's what I'm talking on the book. It's really this relationship that I, I, I made myself uh, really a kid from nature. Yeah, you, there's something in your book, Wild by Nature, that you talk about as well, and it's your friends and family. Is it fair to put them through this, the worry that they must have, that actually your life could be in danger when you're out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, you're right. They travel with me, you know, they travel in a big way. My mum travelled with me, my friend travelled with me. And they, they did their little expedition also, because they, they have to let it go. You have to not to worry about it. But I promised my mum something. I promise her I will not cross a pound of water or a river on foot or swimming through a crocodile country. And I keep my promise. You kept your promise. Yeah. Your poor mother. But lovely to have you with us, Sarah. Thank Thanks you. for telling us about your adventures.